Hello everyone, welcome to a new session in Hematology. Today we are going to discuss a very important, a very common disease that we will encounter in our day-to-day -day practices, that is iron deficiency anemia. Let us approach this subject through a case scenario. A 30-year-old female comes with chief complaints of easy fatigability and breathlessness for the past few days. Her urine pregnancy test was positive a month ago. On examination, pulse rate was 110 tachycardia. Her tongue appears to be pale and ironed out. What is your probable diagnosis? See, whenever a pregnant female, a pregnant lady comes with chief complaints of easy fatigability, breathlessness with elevated uh, what pulse rate, and pale tongue, your diagnosis should be always iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia. We will see the clinical features in detail. What are the peripheral smear findings? How will you confirm it laboratorically? Causes, what are pencil cells? What are the bone marrow findings? What is your differential diagnosis? At the end of this session, I'm extremely confident that you will be able to find answers to all of these questions. So remember, iron deficiency anemia is classically, that is morphologically described as microcytic hypochromic. Microcytic means the size of RBC is less. That means less than 80 femtoliter. The mean corpuscular volume MCV less than 80 femtoliter. And hypochromic means the amount of hemoglobin that is which is uh, what represented by a red blood cell indices what we call it as mean corpuscular hemoglobin MCH less than 25 picogram. You should remember this. And the bone marrow will be always hypoproliferative. I have told in my video on uh, lecture lecture on erythropoiesis that uh, in deficiency anemias, the reticulocyte count will be always low. In hemolytic anemia, the reticulocyte count will be always increased. Suppose if a patient in iron deficiency anemia have increased reticulocyte count, what does it indirectly indicate? I have told you reticulocyte index is a best indicator for bone marrow activity. It indicates that the patient is responding, responding well to the treatment. Fine? Yes. Okay. Remember, before going into the pathogenesis, the transport, the storage, the absorption of iron and iron metabolism is very important. Iron is present in hemoglobin, myoglobin, cytochrome system. It is essential for DNA, RNA, protein, myelin synthesis. Fine. The basic pathogenesis behind iron deficiency anemia is reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood resulting in hypoxia. This will cause tissue damage. So remember, iron, the food what we eat, the food what we eat may has both ferrous and ferric form. Consider most of the food have ferric forms. This ferric forms, remember, iron can be always be observed in, can be, up, in order to observe the iron, what? We have to change it into ferrous form. So the ferric is converted into ferrous with the help of an enzyme, as we can see in this picture, called duodenum cytochrome B reductase. It will reduce ferric to ferrous. This ferrous form will be observed via the apical membrane. This is the apical membrane. This is the basolateral membrane. Via the apical membrane through a transporter called divalent metal transporter 1. So within the endocyte, we have the ferrous ion. This ferrous ion is stored in the form of what we call it as ferritin. Ferritin. Fine? Yes. Again, remember this ferritin, this ferritin, okay, has what we call it as Fe2+. Okay. This Fe2 plus has to be transported across. It has to be transported across. That is uh, the basolateral membrane of the enterocyte via two important transporter called ferroportin 1 and the hephaestin. Hephaestin is a ceruloplasmin analog. Okay, yes. And this transporter will convert the ferrous form again, once again. Already ferric was converted into ferrous. Now ferrous is once again converted back into ferric with the help of an enzyme called as ferroxidase. Okay, and this ferric form further combines with the upper transferrin, which is nothing else but what we call it as an iron transport binding protein. Okay, it is this upper transferrin which will help transport the iron in our circulation. So the ferric form of iron combines with upper transferrin to form transferrin and it is this transferrin which takes the iron to liver and bone marrow. So with this simple picture, okay, the single picture and I have very what clearly explained you how the iron metabolism works. Fine, yes, see. Ferry reductase, cytochrome B reductase, ferroportin 1, divalent metal transporter 1, ceruloplasmin analog, which is the hephaestin. I hope this is clear. Yes. Remember, this iron metabolism is has to be pro, is well regulated. We have a regulating a circulating peptide hormone. We call it as hepcidin. Remember, this hepcidin will keeps control over the total body iron. 
it will avoid both iron deficiency and iron overload remember it is hepcidin is produced mainly in liver but it is also produced by kidney myocardium and adipose tissue and remember hepcidin is called as a negative regulator of iron transport into the plasma that means it will always tries to keep the iron or it will always try not to absorb the iron remember hepcidin is a negative regulator that means it will always try not to absorb the iron fine yes so how it acts at endocyte level it will regulate the absorption at macrophage level it inhibit the release of iron that means it will promote the storage of iron within the macrophages so that the plasma level of iron remains always normal and hepatic level it regulates the iron release in the hepatocytes from the hepatocytes this hepcidin prevent the release of iron again it will not try as a result it again it tries to what uh, keep the iron serum iron level always normal so this is the role of hepcidin okay this is the role of hepcidin so actually what is this hepcidin doing i told you know it has actions at all these three levels okay so remember a very important point this hepcidin inhibit iron uptake in the duodenum and iron release from the macrophages okay how it decreases the function of ferroportin simple it will decrease the function of two important transporter one is divalent metal transporter one i have already told you dmt1 will increase the absorption it is the one which absorbs the iron through the apical membrane that is inhibited again ferroportin and hephaestine cerebroplasm and log ferroportin it will promote the iron release through the basolateral membrane into the circulation that is inhibited so at this two make what site the hepcidin will exert a negative regulation thus it always what try not to observe iron this is the hepcidin fine yes so remember this hepcidin secretion is regulated mainly by what iron stores it is always um what uh, regulated by iron stores so now i am asking you a very basic question in iron deficiency anemia our body or the serum iron level is low so what will hepcidin do will it promote iron absorption or inhibit iron absorption the answer is very easy it will always promote iron absorption because body doesn't have iron so it will promote at the same time iron overload it is for example sideroblastic anemia the hepcidin level will be hepcidin level will be low why it is low uh, the i am right the hepcidin level will be low because it won't it hepcidin should not absorb iron because already our body has lot of iron there is no need to absorb furthermore iron so this is the basic mechanism this is the basic mechanism so this is actually what we call it as mucosal block mechanism this has been asked uh, i think this is a question in your biochemistry so there are three components of iron absorption i told you know the three site yes so the iron absorption is mainly what is the site duodenum and upper jejunum they will ask this in your viva so what will happen what is this mucosal block mechanism that means the mucosal cell control the amount of iron absorbed and also the amount that is transferred to plasma known as block mucosal block mechanism that means it is this what mucosal cell or the endocyte which controls it is the mucosal cells which is the endocyte which decides whether the iron should be stored within it in the form of a ferritin or whether it should be released into the plasma for binding with the transferrin so i hope that uh, this uh, this mechanism is clear for you yes for example when the iron stores are reduced as in case of iron deficiency anemia absorption is enhanced so almost all the iron which is stored in the form of ferritin within the endocyte will be released into the circulation fine yes so remember remember in chronic inflammation what is that in chronic inflammation interleukin 6 will be released liver will be producing more hepcidin what will hepcidin do what will hepcidin do the iron export from endocyte to the plasma is diminished that means iron release is suppressed iron will always remain within the macrophages i told you the hepcidin means you remember remember what not to absorb iron always inhibit iron okay plasma level the iron should not be high that is the only aim of hepcidin so in chronic inflammation the hepcidin level will be high the, so when hepcidin level is high the plasma iron level will be low that means the iron stores will be increased that means all the iron will remain remain within the endocyte or it will always remain within the macrophages or the hepatocyte okay i hope this is clear yes okay this is what we have discussed then coming into so the extent of iron absorption is dependent upon the requirement of iron by the body this is the final statement you have to take home message transport of iron i told you know very very important the transferring it is the transferring which will transport iron in the systemic circulation remember in mcq question one molecule of transferring carries two atoms of iron 
okay that is the important point you have to remember fine so so fine we have something called as transferrin receptors it is responsible for internalization of transferrin bound ion into the normoblast through a vesicle okay yes so this is the what is that is called as transferrin receptor we have something called a serum transferrin receptor okay yes which is nothing else but a transferrin receptor complex it reflects the level of or the amount of membranous transferrin receptor okay yes that means the serum transferrin levels increases in iron deficiency anemia why in iron deficiency anemia the need of the body is what is the our body needs body needs more iron more iron means what that means the more iron has to be in the blood in the blood means what the iron will be always combined with the transferrin so the transferrin receptor that is serum transferrin receptor level will be always more in iron deficiency anemia because the need of the body is the body needs more and more iron more iron okay this is the simple thing see if you understand the basics it is very easy or else you have to mug up yes ferritin is decreased that is increased because we have lot of differential diagnosis for iron deficiency anemia you have to mug up so if you know the basics there is no need of mug up just you can take a second take a while you can just think and you can write so the need of the uh, need or what is the problem in iron deficiency anemia we don't have iron so we don't have iron means who should be suppressed hepcidin should be suppressed am i right if the hepcidin is increased what will happen the iron deficiency anemia will worsen fine that is the body will not have even more iron okay that means the complete iron absorption will be so hepcidin level should be kept low so what is the first laboratory finding if i ask you of course even though hepcidin can't be measured okay if i am asking you what is the first thing uh, so far you have learned from this the hepcidin level is low in iron deficiency anemia that means more iron will be observed more iron will be released so the plasma iron level will start to increase what happens to the serum transferrin more iron in the plasma how the iron will be whether it will huh, what exist in air or what no it will should always bind to some transporter what is the transporter transferring what is the transferring it has some receptor that is called transferrin receptor since this transferrin receptors are present in serum we call it a serum transferrin receptor so serum transferrin receptor levels are increased in iron deficiency anemia very simple fine yes iron excretion remember in females around 2 mg of iron is lost in a day Okay, fine. Why? Because of menstruation. That is the reason. Compared to meal. Okay. Storage form of iron. Number one, hemosiderin. Number two, ferritin. Hemosiderin is the brown pigment which gives the positive pearls Prussian blue reaction. Ferritin. Remember, this is the very very important. This question has been asked few years back in Jipmo. What is the difference between hemosiderin and ferritin? Both are the storage form of iron, but but hemosiderin stains positive for pearls Prussian blue reaction, whereas ferritin is negative for pearls Prussian blue reaction. Fine, yes. So ferritin is present in circulation, and the serum ferritin levels reflect the iron stores. I told you know ferritin means where where you have come across the word ferritin, the ferrous forms which is observed through the apical membrane of the endocyte is stored within the endocyte as ferritin. Now is it are you satisfied? Okay, do you believe in the point the statement that I have made few seconds before that ferritin is the storage form? Yes, it is stored within the endocyte. Okay, what about hemosiderin in the bone marrow? That is reticular endothelial cells. Okay, fine. and remember again this storage is regulated by hepcidin i am asking you a straight question i am making a statement hepcidin promotes storage of iron true or false true why i told you hepcidin always always try to keep the iron within the storage am i right within the endocyte or within the bone marrow i am making an another statement hepcidin promotes iron absorption true or false it is a false even at the midnight if somebody wake up you and ask you this question you should say no hepcidin always inhibit iron absorption it's a negative regulator of iron absorption fine yes so so when hepcidin is increasing what happens to the iron store next question when hepcidin is increasing iron stores increases or decreases again increases fine i hope there is no need to explain it further you are very clear with this okay fine see the dietary iron absorption iron in plasma in plasma we have transferrin storage pool okay the normal uh, life uh, span is 100 to 120 days fine iron excretion in 1 to 2 mg per day this is the normal iron balance fine see this is the stages of iron deficiency see what is happening see what's happening okay in iron deficiency anemia just focus on point number 4 iron deficiency anemia 
iron stores what happens to the iron stores it is nil why because all the stored iron is released into the circulation because our serum iron is low so there is no what uh, need uh, there is no meaning in storing out the iron all the iron stores will be depleted okay that is why that is why okay i will say in that bone marrow findings don't worry the serum ferritin will be less than 12 what, what is the normal 15 to 300 what is serum ferritin actually ferritin is the storage form i have already told you that storage form is depleted serum ferritin will be less total iron binding capacity normal is 300 to 360 okay but in iron deficiency anyway total iron binding capacity will be increased increased why iron binding capacity will be increased because all the iron which is stored within the storage site has been released into the circulation so in the circulation the binding capacity of the iron is high because more iron molecules more transferring serum transferring receptors yes so serum transferring receptors increased microcytic hypochromic hemoglobin is less transferring saturation saturation is decreased how more transferring receptors are there more transferring receptors are there for example Remember, 100 transferring receptors are there, TFR. We have some 200 molecules of iron. 200 molecules of iron. Am I right? So, I told you that, uh, what to say? Yes, one transferring have two atoms. So, this will equal, am I right? 100 transferring will bind with the 200 ion atoms. Now, imagine whether there is any, what is saturation? That means after, you know, in enzyme kinetics, you have learned after an enzyme binds with the substrate, still there will be some more substrate. Okay. Or vice versa. Still there will be some more enzymes left. That is called the saturation. Here, 100 transferring receptors there, 200 ion atoms are there. Equal, equal. There is no, nothing left, no enzymes left, no substrate left. So the transfer, there is saturation is zero. This is an example. That is why I told you that the percentage sa transferring saturation, word is important, MCQ, they will, what, confuse you. Saturation is less, whereas the serum transferring receptors are increasing. This is what I have told. If you understand, it is very easy. If you mug up, no, never you will get the answer correct in your multiple choice question. All concepts only, pure and pure and pure concepts. Okay, yes, that is done. That is done. Okay, so now, now you have come, you have found the answer for diagnosis. Okay, then laboratory finding. See, you can write about ion stores one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven parameters you can write. These are the laboratory parameters. Next, functional iron deficiency. What is functional iron deficiency? For example, in anemia of chronic disorders, we will see that separately. Anemia of chronic kidney disease. Okay, that means the iron stores will be normal. What happens to the iron stores in iron deficiency anemia? Depleted. Whereas in this condition, the iron stores is normal, but then, then also the iron is unavailable for erythropoiesis. This is called as functional iron deficiency. Functional iron deficiency. What are the findings in functional iron deficiency? Actually, this is a high edged. Okay, this is an extra edge information. Okay, those who are aiming for what to say gold medals for them. Okay, the reticulocyte count, uh, the red cell sink protoporphyrin and serum transferring receptor serum ferritin index. Okay, I will tell all these indexes and all later. So, these are the three parameters by which we can assess the functional iron deficiency. Okay, in this condition, the serum ferritin will be normal or increased. What happens to see you are now going to tell what will be the serum ferritin in case of iron deficiency anemia, decreased or increased or normal. You, even the midnight, you should say it should be decreased. You know the reason. Fine. Yes, serum ferritin is decreased. Less than 12. Normal is 15 to 300. What is the normal total iron binding capacity? 300 to 360. Iron deficiency enemy is more than 400. You should know the normal values. Fine. Okay. See, iron deficiency anemia, iron deficiency anemia, it uh, because you know iron is very important for myelin synthesis. So the patient may also present with patient may also present with what some CNS manifestation. Coming into etiology, etiology is either because of dietary deficiency or impaired absorption. This and all I'm going to what but just brush it up. Okay, this and all you can write by your own itself. Etiology, genetic forms due to uh, what is a A transfer anemia, A seroloplasminemia, divalent metal transporter deficiency, iron deficiency, vitamin A deficiency, gluten sensitive enteropathy, uh, gastrectomy, atrophic gastritis because you know HCL is very important for iron absorption. Then peptic ulcer, hemorrhoids, aspirin, uh, hookworm infestation. Hookworm infestation is one of the most important parasitic cause for. Uh, so they may also give a history of a farmer. Okay, they may give a history of a farmer who is walking with a barefoot. He comes with easy vertebrality, okay, severe pallor, everything. So you have 
out to always suspect iron deficiency anyway because hoop worm infestation is one of the most common cause of iron deficiency anyway in developing countries like India. Fine. Then menorrhagia, that is excessive weight loss, PNH, infancy, pregnancy, lactation, malaria, tuberculosis, HIV, all this. Okay. So it may be either because of impaired absorption, increased dietary deficiency, increased blood loss. Okay. I told you, you know, hoop worm infestation. Very, very important. So this question. Uh, has been asked okay and one liner in hook worm infestation remember 0.2 ml per worm okay is lost what is that 0.2 ml per worm okay per day then then blood loss from GIT, hemoglobinuria, inflammatory bowel disease, all this increased demands in case of pregnancy, lactation, everything. Okay. For example, in pregnancy, we need around 650 milligram of iron. Then divalent metal transporter one deficiency. Then iron resistant. Yeah, we have something called as what is iron resistant irida. That is iron resistant yeah, iron deficiency anemia. What is iron resistant iron deficiency anemia? It is because of TMPR SS6 gene mutation. Okay. This gene product is involved in the suppression of hepcidin synthesis. So that means hepcidin synthesis is inhibited what is the role of hepcidin to inhibit inhibit um ion synthesis here the hepcidin synthesis is suppressed that means the hepcidin levels will be high so this is called as iron resistant iron deficiency and may very rarely asked just for completion sake then then cow's milk you know calcium inhibits iron absorption okay what is the pathogenesis these four points you should write when they ask you briefly explain the pathogenesis for the same impaired hemoglobin impaired synthesis impaired cellular proliferation diminished iron containing proteins reduced red cell survival when anemia is severe okay yes that is uh, you told no the transfer saturation falls less than 15 percentage okay what is the uh, you see you can see you know transfer is less than 16 or less than 15 percent that is very critical if it is less than 15 it is critical okay then impaired cellular proliferation i told you know what is that it is a hypoproliferative bone marrow will be hypoproliferative because in iron iron is very important for dna rna synthesis since cellular cellular proliferation is impaired in iron deficiency anemia it is a hypoproliferative type of anemia then iron containing proteins that is myoglobin cytochrome c everything will be decreased the red cell survival the lifespan of rbc is also decreased so the patient may have see fatigue palpitation headache dizziness breathlessness irritability remember the patient becomes symptomatic only when the hemoglobin falls below 7 gram per deciliter then growth and development the patient may have standard growth neurodevelopment i told you because it is important for myelin synthesis pica what is pica it is an irresistible what uh, rg to eat non edible things the, you know pica is very commonly seen in pregnancy okay that is uh, pregnant ladies will be seeing non edible items and it is a, if the pica is also pica is also seen in some psychological disorders and if pica is present that means we can see the patient will be eating bricks, sand, soil, okay, stones. So definitely it is a indirect, definitely you can confirm your diagnosis that it is classical feature of iron deficiency anemia. Then you can see atrophy of papillae of the tongue, okay. The tongue becomes what to say a bald tongue or an ironed out tongue because there is no papillae, okay. And you can see angular stomatitis, fine. And the spoon shaped nails, we call it as coilonachia. This is the spoon shaped nails. You can see, you know, the spooning of nails. If you go to your medicine ward, you can see in severe iron deficiency anemia, you can see this coilonachia or spoon shaped nails we have something called as plumber vincent syndrome what is plumber vincent syndrome plumber vincent syndrome i'm writing here as pv syndrome plumber vincent syndrome is characterized by number one iron deficiency anemia it is a triad number two angular stomatitis angular stomatitis and number three we have something called as esophageal webs esophageal webs okay esophageal webs okay we have something called as esophageal webs fine then uh, what are the other manifestations? Chronic atrophic uh, gastritis, congestive heart failure. I told you it's a anemia is a hyperdynamic circulation. That means high volume pulse. The pulse rate will be tachycardic. Fine. Cognitive function. I told you know that is a neurological manifestation and immune of the system will be also affected. Okay. Then diagnosis, peripheral blood smear findings. Okay. Yes. So MCV will be less than 80. MCH will be less than 25. <coughs> Actually, red cell distribution width. Actually, what is this red cell distribution width? Red cell distribution width, okay. Uh, it's actually, what does it indicate? It indicates the extent of anisopoikilocytosis. What is anisopoikilocytosis? That is, uh, what to say, abnormal shape and size of RBC. That is called as anisopoikilocytosis. Anisopoikilocytosis means shape, uh, what to say, like, um, 
size and poikilos means shape so anisopoikilos that is unvariable size and shape that is called as anisopoikilocytosis so this is measured okay this is measured by a what to say laboratory parameter called as red cell distribution width so if it is more than 17.1 it is clearly suggestive of iron deficiency anemia but remember it is also present in other conditions like beta thalassemia also mchc is also less than 27 gram there is no need as far as randogazid is concerned remember mcv mch red cell distribution width increases that means anisopoikilocytosis that means in blood smear in peripheral smear we can see more abnormal sized and shaped rbcs fine okay then microcytic hypochromic anemia i told you anisopoikilocytosis is mild to moderate microcytic hypochromic anemia and we can see that is uh, the red cell membrane no is stiff in iron deficiency iron deficiency cell what is the normal shape of rbc bicorp but in case of iron deficiency anemia the walls there is a plasma membrane of the rbc is so stiff that this rbc becomes elongated and that is what we call it as pencil shaped cells okay pencil shaped cells you can see in this picture you can see the elongated cells these are called as pencil shaped cells so i hope you have found the answer for another question also now these are the pencil shaped cells this is because of the stiffness of the rbc membrane in iron deficiency anemia Okay, then hypochromia. When we say that hypochromia, you know, normally this this consider this is an RBC. We have central pallor. Am I right? If the central pallor is more than one third of the diameter, more than one third of the diameter of the cell, we call it as hypochromia. So hypochromia is recognized by the central pallor, which is more than one third of the diameter of the cell. This is very very important. So sometimes this central pallor becomes two third, or almost it becomes like a what to say. Uh, three fourth of the cell, three fourth of the cell, okay, three fourth of the cell, and we can see only a peripheral rim of hemoglobin. Okay, see, for example, this central pallor will be like this, and you can see only a peripheral ring of hemoglobin. I am going to highlight the peripheral ring of hemoglobin with the yellow color here, so you can see this. What is this called? This is called as a ring or pessary. It looks like a pessary, right? Yes, also a ring. So that is why it is called as a ring or pessary cell. So pencil cells. What is the reason I have told you? And what are the reason for pessary cells? Because the central pallor is normally, if it is more than one third of the diameter, we call it as hypochromic. When it becomes two third or three fourth of the cell, we call it as ring cells or pessary cells. What happens to the reticulocyte count? Yes. Increased or decreased? Very good. Decreased. When it will become increased? When the patient start responding to the therapy, the reticulocyte count starts increasing. That is the earliest indicator. Okay. But before that, what is the earliest indicator that the patient is responding to therapy? That is the alleviation. That is the what to say. The symptoms will subside. For example, the patient is complaining with the easy fatigability, breathlessness. No, I am giving oral iron tablets or intravenous iron uh, what therapy? Okay, intravenous iron therapy. So what will happen? The first, the patient will say that yes, my symptoms are relieved. That is the earliest indicator for. Response to treatment, and these are the laboratory parameters. Okay, we can't we can't ask all patients to see the reticulocyte count in all the medical colleges or uh, all health setups. Fine. So you can see iron deficiency anemia. You can see the what to say. You can see in this very beautiful in this picture the central pallor is almost more than one third. Okay, this is the RBC and the central pallor you can see more than one third. So this is the red cell distribution width. You can see here RDW <coughs> is almost forty three point four. See that is an extent or what to say moderate to severe anisopoikilocytosis. Okay, mm, and you can see the microcytic hypochromic anemia. Fine. Yes. See. This is the see how you should compare in the peripheral smear. This can be asked in your viva exam. How will you say that it is microcytic? Because when you see the through the microscope, you can say okay, it is or oh, less than eighty femtoliter so and so. So how will you see? That means the RBC is compared to the nucleus of a small lymphocyte. Fine. Yes. So in this picture, you can see that this is the nucleus. Am I right? The full bluish color is the nucleus of the lymphocyte. You can see the RBC size is less than the nucleus of lymphocyte. So you can say that it is a microcytic. So always when the examiner in practical exam and they ask you how will you say that, sir, I have. Compared the size of the RBC should be compared with the nucleus of a small lymphocyte. When it is less, we call it as microcytic. See, this is the pencil cell, cigar-shaped cells. Okay, sometimes you can see what is this. See, <coughs> um, yeah, okay. See, these are the ring cells or the pessary cells. Okay, one, one second. I draw now. These are the ring cells or the pessary cell, and you can see thrombocytosis. What these dot dot clumping structures? No, these are thrombocytosis. This is very very important. Uh, okay, they may or may not ask. Okay, just it's a high level thing. Remember, in iron deficiency anemia, you will get thrombocytosis in cases some cases of iron deficiency anemia. <coughs> okay, so once this is done, let us go for the bone marrow features. Erythroid hyperplasia is present. Okay, yes. Then myelopoiesis, megakaryopoiesis are normal. So they have asked you. 
what are the two bone marrow or right any some uh, bone marrow findings answer is erythroid hyperplasia because rbc is less right so the bone marrow will try to produce more rbc that is called as erythroid hyperplasia then another most important thing is remember it is a hypoproliferative state okay hypoproliferative state and uh, the another most important thing is the prussian blue uh, strain reaction no it is almost negative nil why because bone marrow is one of the reticular endothelial system no that is hemocytin is the ion storage which is the storage form of ion in the bone marrow but here the, we have already learned that in iron deficiency anemia the ion stores are completely depleted so the bone marrow that is the pearls pressure blue reaction is zero or it is negative okay it is grade zero okay nil no ion stores in bone marrow so these are the two important thing you can write then another most important thing what you can write is myelopoiesis and megakaryopoiesis are normal as far as an undergraduate is concerned you have to write erythroid hyperplasia myelopoiesis and megakaryopoiesis are normal then iron storage is nil fine yes then serum ferritin i told you it is decreased iron serum iron is decreased but total iron binding capacity is increased serum transferrin receptors are increased whereas what is decreased transferrin saturation percentage is decreased fine yes yes so the serum transferrin receptor protein no it is increased in iron deficiency anemia remember it is this uh, entity which helps to differentiate i, uh, we ha I have last question right? what are the differential diagnosis yes so one of the differential diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia is anemia of chronic disease in anemia of chronic disease so how will you differentiate iron deficiency anemia almost both of them will have the same clinical picture how will you differentiate in iron deficiency anemia in laboratory parameter we have serum transferrin receptor levels are increased whereas this serum transferrin receptor levels are not increased in case of anemia of chronic disease it will be always normal okay this is very very important it is a sensitive indicator okay for iron deficiency anemia sensitive means it helps to this entity helps to differentiate iron deficiency anemia from some other condition what's the closest differential diagnosis for iron deficiency anemia anemia of chronic disease in anemia of chronic disease the transferrin serum transferrin receptor level will be normal see iron deficiency anemia uh, you can see the bone marrow these are the bone marrow erythroid hyperplasia okay yes then another thing mm, yes fine see this is the pearls pression blue pearls pression blue see this is the iron barrow you can see there is a grade what is the grade nil iron stores are nil if there are iron stones you will get a blue am i right persian pearls pression blue reactions will be positive here you can you can't even see even a single what to say spot am i right single dot of iron that means iron stores are completely depleted what to say depleted which is highly suggestive of iron deficiency anemia screen test hemoglobin serum ferritin transferrin confirmatory test very very important response to iron therapy serum ferritin transferrin saturation serum transferrin receptor ferritin index i will tell what it is serum transferrin receptor level erythrocyte protoporphyrin erythrocyte protoporphyrin and all we want to just for theoretical purpose so <clears throat> reticulocyte hemoglobin i told you, you know the reticulocyte hemoglobin that is reticulocyte count will be starting to increase okay it will be starting to increase when the patient what to say um when the patient uh, starts responding to the treatment okay i told you it will takes around 1 to 2 days for a reticulocyte to convert into a mature rbc when free erythro erythrocyte protoporphyrin level will be increased just remember that don't uh, worry about the values and all fine then serum transferrin receptor ferritin index okay yes it is nothing else but what is this single actually it's a ratio okay it's the ratio of serum transferrin receptor to logarithm log of ferritin it's a very uh, better assessment for iron status if the value is more than 2 it is suggestive of iron deficiency anemia all this why i am telling means you may get any question in uh, mcq okay any uh, as even they may put these statements as any of one of your options so you may not feel you should not confused okay or you should not feel like blank that you don't know about this that is why i am mentioning that differential diagnosis thalassemia number one very very important it is a hemolytic anemia in hemolytic so differential diagnosis but what clinical features and all same to iron deficiency anemia we can differentiate that means both are different entities am i right that is the meaning of differential diagnosis so thalassemia major can also present with so and so symptoms how will you differentiate iron stores will be increased the reticulocyte count will be increased we will see the, those things in thalassemia anemia of chronic disease i told you already how to differentiate iron deficiency anemia and anemia of chronic disease yes very good serum transferrin receptor assay it will be increased in iron deficiency anemia it will be normal in anemia of chronic disease okay anemia of chronic disease means what due to some chronic underlying inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis multiple myeloma inflammatory bowel disease all those things what will be happening the patient may have anemia how to differentiate again again what to say uh, yes very very important hepcidin what happens to the hepcidin level in iron deficiency anemia iron deficiency anemia the hepcidin level will be low or else iron can't be observed 
but in case of uh, what to say in anemia of chronic disease i have already already shown a very important what to say flow chart see in chronic inflammation in chronic inflammation in chronic inflammation hepcidin level will be increased because of inflammation so iron stores will be increased whereas in iron deficiency anemia hepcidin levels are low so iron stores are completely depleted so then under serum transferrin receptor these two parameters you can use to differentiate one is serum transferrin receptors another one is hepcidin hepcidin level is decreased serum transferrin receptor levels are increased in iron deficiency anemia in anemia of chronic disease hepcidin levels are increased iron stores are increased and what about the serum transferrin receptors it is normal then we have some called as sideroblastic anemia because of increased iron stores how will you differentiate we can do pearls pression blue in iron deficiency anemia there is pearls pression blue stain is negative in bone marrow whereas it is positive in case of sideroblastic anemia because in sideroblastic anemia there is excessive iron stores okay so these are the important three important close differential diagnosis you should write as an undergraduate for your exam <laughs> I told you iron resistant iron deficiency anemia. The causes are H. pylori, uh, autoimmune atrophic gastritis, and celiac disease. Fine. Yes. How will you treat? Yes. Sometimes they may ask you. Treatment means oral iron therapy for a sulfate. You can read that from your pharmacology or parenteral iron therapy like iron sorbitol, iron sucrose. We have something. Okay. All those things. <coughs> See, microcytic hypochromic anemia. This is a very beautiful chart. The serum ferritin is reduced. Bone marrow iron is nil. Answer is iron deficiency anemia. Serum ferritin is normal or increased. We can do what? Uh, and we found that what to say? The fetal hemoglobin uh, the, in electrophoresis. If the fetal hemoglobin is normal, it is anemia of chronic disease. If the fetal hemoglobin is increased, it is thalassemia and another other hemoglobinopathies. We will see about fetal hemoglobin, electrophoresis, everything in hemolytic anemia. Suppose if the serum ferritin is increased, only one condition. Only one condition. Okay, and if the bone marrow iron is increased, the answer is sideroblastic anemia. See, one iron deficiency anemia, two, three, and four are the differential diagnosis. Anemia of chronic disease, beta thalassemia major or minor, or whatever other hemoglobinopathies and sideroblastic anemia. These are the three close differential diagnoses to uh, iron deficiency anemia. So I know this is a very vast topic, very must known topic. Without learning this topic, you can't go, you can't sit for the university exam for paper one it is a must question any okay from any aspect they will ask question you should be well versed in all dimensions so i hope that this session has been useful for all of you thank you